Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. I sure hope your week has been going well and you've spent your time getting to spend time every day with the Lord in his word and prayer. I hope you've been able to, during the week, spend time with other believers, strengthening each other. But I sure hope, too, that along the way you've had a chance to be around those who do not yet know Christ. I want to say more in a moment about how I want to help you to make your time around lost people more impactful by getting some gospel tracks. They're an evangelism tool. That's the main thrust of the ministry that we do here at this organization called Bible Tracks Incorporated. I want to highlight a track and then tell you how to get tracks from us, but I'm going to do that here in just a moment. I want you to turn in your Bibles, if at all possible, with me to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter 2, we're doing a series all the way through this book. Now, here's what I want to do to help you get started, because I think you realize it every day. I like to begin every the broadcast in such a way that will hopefully pique your interest and keep you listening. Uh, today, I want to begin by asking you about a man that I've been dealing with. He claims to be a believer, but I'm struggling with his statements. While I can't see his heart, obviously, here's what I can see, and here's what I can know for a fact about this guy's life. Let me give you seven facts. Number one, he began his life in a pagan home where they actually worshiped idols. Number two, he listened to a guy who claimed that God spoke to him audibly. Number three, I don't know of a single time where this man ever had personal devotions or was active in public worship of the true and living God. Number four, he acted contrary to God's word at almost every turn. Number five, he constantly looked out for himself and never looked out for anybody else. Number six, he preferred to be around lost people rather than saved people. And then number seven, whenever it seems God did try to get him away from the ungodly, he resisted at every turn. So you tell me, is this guy a believer? He says he is. Uh, Stay tuned for more. Get your Bible. Get something with that you can jot the notes. Won't you please? I mentioned those gospel tracts a moment ago. That word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We have been publishing for 80 years gospel tracts, each one different in how it comes at the gospel, but each one tells the same gospel story. There is only one gospel story. This track is entitled, Thank You, Your Service Was, and you can use it to rate when somebody serves you. Now, Let me read you how this track begins. It says, recognizing that you're very busy and can't devote your time to only one person, I've tried to give you a fair appraisal. You've noticed that I did not indicate your service was the greatest in the world. You wonder what it would require to merit such a rating? Well, you could have paid what I owed. Ridiculous? Well, of course it is. No one expects such service. It would have cost you to serve me, and to give the greatest service in the world would require you paying the bill to everybody you serve, and such service would cost you everything. Yet, there is one who really did choose to serve in such a manner. His name is Jesus Christ. And from there we go into the gospel. It's a great tool, great gospel track. Oh, friend, you are going to be served, whether in a restaurant or the car repairman or something, you're going to be served along the way in life. Why not use those times as gospel times? At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our contact information. Use one of those methods. Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. We'll send you absolutely free of charge a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one. Thank you. Your service was... 
But then if you cannot wait to the end, just go to our website. There's a lot of things on the website, by the way, but our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Go there, please. Let you and I become partners in the gospel. Well, I'm going to turn here, Second Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 7. The Bible says this, And delivered just Lot, vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. I'm going to stop reading right there. Now, just in case you wonder about who this man was and is that I've been dealing with, his name is Lot. You probably know the story. If I were to give one more fact about Lot's life, it would be this. At the end of his life, he got drunk, committed a very ugly sin with his two daughters, and both of the girls became pregnant. Obviously, that would give it away, wouldn't it? You know it's Lot. Now, this chapter, chapter 2, is all about false teachers. It openly says that God was going to judge false teachers. And then the chapter gives three examples from the past. That's verses 4 to 8 about God, how God judged, first of all, rebellious angels, how he judged rebellious world, and how he judged two rebellious cities. That's Sodom and Gomorrah. In these verses, the man Lot is mentioned by name. God rescued him from judgment, the judgment that came on Sodom and Gomorrah. These verses tell us that Lot was a just and a righteous man. That means that even though Lot did not live a godly life pattern, still he was saved. That's what the word justified means. The harsh reality of Lot's story is this. It's obviously possible for a person to live a very ugly daily life and yet still be part of God's family. Frankly, I don't like Lot's story. I wish it wasn't in the Bible, but there it is. God's in charge of the Bible, not Mark Smith. Today, though, my goal is to help you and I to not end our lives in such a ruinous and spiritual ugly manner like Lot did. A few years ago, a pastor friend of mine shared these facts about Lot's life with me. Please jot them down. There are four reasons, key reasons, why Lot's life ended up in such a mess. Are you ready? Number one is this. Lot was given advice by a trusted man of God that was contrary to God's word, but Lot took it. In the book of Genesis, chapter 12, God told Abraham to leave his family and for him and his wife to head for a new land. Well, Abraham went, of course, but he took Lot, but Lot didn't belong there. It sure appears that while Lot was in Canaan, that he got saved, but he was there contrary to the revealed word of God. Never go against the word of God. Reason number two, Lot's life ended a mess is this. Lot watched worship, but never did worship. Nowhere in the book of Genesis do we read that Lot worshiped or did any kind of sacrifice to God. Oh, Abraham did, but not Lot. Now, I personally believe we have a lot of people sitting in good Bible preaching churches today whose bodies are there, but they are not worshiping. They are failing at this one. Reason number three that Lot's life ended up such a mess is this. Lot saw inconsistencies in Abraham's life. He saw those inconsistencies. Whenever things went well for Abraham, Abraham worshiped God. But when there was trouble and difficulty, like famine in the land, Abraham headed towards Egypt. It was there in Egypt that he took Lot, and Lot there saw the splendor of the ungodly society, and that desire for earthly pleasures got stuck in Lot's soul, and it never got out of there. So far, Lot was given advice by a trusted godly man that was contrary to the word of God, and Lot took the advice. Number two, Lot watched worship but never did worship. Number three, Lot saw inconsistencies in Abraham's life. But then number four, Lot's spiritual life failed because he chose earthly things over heavenly things. He chose the temporal over the eternal. Or rather than be close to God, Lot wanted to be close to and even living among the ungodly. That's what put him there in the city of Sodom. Now, 
friend, listen, please. If you desire to have your spiritual life end up similar to Lot's, then here you go. Here's four steps on how to get there. Congratulations. What an ugly goal to have in your spiritual life. These steps will take you to the same kind of place spiritually that they took Lot. Or, or if you and I don't want to end up like Lot, then we'd better have these four steps in our lives, but do them in just the exact opposite. Amen. Now, before I get done with Lot's story, let me also tell you that Lot was uh, not being left alone. God was doing and dealing in his life all the way along. Even though Lot was not walking with God, God was trying to get his attention. How? Let me tell you five things. Number one, God gave Lot two powerful godly examples, Abraham and Melchizedek. Yes, Abraham had some inconsistent moments, but he really walked by faith the vast majority of the time, and Lot saw that. Number two, God gave Lot wealth, took his wealth away, and then gave it back to him. Often that kind of a thing gets a man's attention and turns him around, but not a lot. Number three, Lot had a powerful praying friend named Abraham. When the judgment was coming on to Sodom, Abraham was in the presence of God praying, pleading for him. Number four, God gave Lot a personal warning by angels. How many times have you heard somebody said, well, I would do what God said if he would just write it in the sky or if an angel came and talked to me. Well, Lot had angels come and talk to him and he he knew they were angels, but it didn't turn him around. Why do you think it's going to turn you around when Almighty God has already spoken to you through his word? The fifth thing that God was doing in Lot's life is this. God gave an example of severe, harsh judgment on sin to Lot. It's called the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He saw his wife turn to a pillar of salt. He saw this and it still did not alter his pattern. He still debated with God. When God told him where he wanted to go, Lot pleaded and said, oh no, let me go to the city of Zoar. It's a little city. It's not going to hurt me much. And Lot had to end up leaving there too, didn't he? Tell me, friend, Would anybody close to you think that you were like Lot in any of these four ways? If so, then you know what you you better do. Will you take any step it takes? Will you do whatever it takes so that you don't end up in a similar spiritual status like Lot? Don't go there. Your children are watching. Your grandchildren are watching. Your neighbors are watching. Why don't you and I commit to say, I'm going to turn and do the flip of these four things so that my life, rather than ending up a spiritual failure, ends up in spiritual success. Maybe this coming Sunday, you need to go to your pastor and say, Pastor, I'm taking these steps to end up unlike Lot, but in a place of spiritual success. Pastor, would you pray and help me get there? Dear friend, if you do not know Christ as Savior, you're ended up for hell. Don't go there. Jesus died to save your soul. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.